So now we come to the Gothic arches, and the first one we're going to draw is, I just call this a Gothic arch, but technically it's an equilateral Gothic arch, and um, all that is, that just means that the span is where we take our striping points from each side. So just get that right, do a nice light line, and then you just put it in the other side of the span. And from this striping point, you just go up like so. Um, then just to get the depth of the arch, I just need to mark where the stretcher is going to be. Back into the striping point. Move it out to there. And here we have the whole shape of the arch. Back in the striking point. Just double check that didn't seem right, but we are. He's got to continue that one round. Sell so myself a little bit short on there. So that is the shape of a gothic arch. So again, what we would do is we would mark the gauge out on the extra dos. Um, we uh, don't have the, um, uh, what we call a key brick in here, because obviously the angle of this, we can see, because again, we're gonna radiate from these points as we tend to do on I'm going to say most of the arches, not all the arches, because and we're going to come to um, the other two types of Gothic arch in a while. And um, we'll see that there is uh, a slight difference that you can do. And before I go too far, I don't want to end up with a really horrible tiny cut there. If possible, I want to be working to like a whole brick. And again, it's got to be balanced out. Both sides have got to be the same. I'll just quickly run this through and see if I have to make any adjustments. Do it all dry first. And see how we come. You can see there that that is about half a brick out. So I am going to close that up a touch. I don't want to be making it wider because this is to um, let's see, it's just a bit under. This is already set to 75 mil. So, if I was to make it bigger, then I'd be giving myself large joints on my arch. So you always go a bit smaller, so you can tighten the joints up. And uh, worst case would be you'd end up cutting your bricks to go around, but. A lot of the time that is what happens. Now we're just a little bit too small. Okay so this time you can just see that the more times you do this the, the more difficult it becomes because you start putting marks in uh, from the previous one. So You'll always see that when I do this, when I'm happy that it meets all right at the top, that is as close as I'm going to get for a video anyway, because if I was doing it for real, I probably would have made another slight adjustment. But that was good enough for there. So I'll mark these round. And then I shall just draw these in. Uh, incidentally, history of this arch. This is about 13th century, which uh, is 1400s. Yeah, so about 1400s. Um, we do have um, 
the other style of um, uh, gothic arch. Sorry about me, I'm stumbling on my words here, but it's just, um, again, as I said on previous ones, when I'm drawing and trying to talk, concentrate, um, the speech kind of comes second to um, what I find is the most important thing. Um, yeah, with the other arches, um, the Lancer arch was around about the same time as uh, this Gothic arch. Lancer is uh, also a, a Gothic arch, but um, I'll show you a drawing of that in a short while, as soon as I've done this. Um, and technically, they were slightly before these arches. Um, so you're kind of like looking at the 12th century um, to the beginning of the 13th century for the Lancer arch. Uh, and then they went into these equilateral ones. And then after that, when they wanted to make the windows wider, um, we get what we call a drop gothic, which is the third arch in the um, uh, style of the gothic. Uh, that's about 15th century, that is. And um, I'll show you a drawing of both of those as soon as I draw these last ones in. Which is just about now. Okay, so I'll do the other side in a minute, but this is, as we like, the Gothic arch, where the striking point, let me just draw that before I show you the other ones. The striking point is the other opposite side of the span. So there's a striking point for there, and the striking point for that side would be there. So that is a Gothic arch, a Lancer arch. You can see the striking points are outside of the span, and that just pulls the arch in making it taller and um, again very similar set them out everything was done uh, from here to mark the extra dos to then radiate to the striking point to get your shape of your bricks and then we have the drop gothic when they wanted the windows bigger now this one the you can see the um, striking point is within the span so rather than this point where you have a gothic arch or outside you have a drop gothic, which obviously made a point, a uh, more pointy arch. The drop gothic one gave a bigger window and the spans, uh, sorry, the stroking points were inside the span. Now, again, you can see from the stroking point, all the gauge was marked out from there. Now, if the gauge was marked out from the centre, you can see that we get a very much uh, different style of, um, of cutting there because on here every single brick is the same until obviously you get to the key bricks where um, you'd have to merge them into each other but when it's you set it out from the, the center point you can see that every single brick gradually starts to change so not only is it different each one is different on the intrados, that's also different on the extrados, and then both sides are different as well. Very, very much the same as when we did flat arches. So you can see that every one of these bricks is individual, so a lot more time consuming. Um, and these ones are called uh, Venetian arches. When, when they radiate to a center point rather than a striking point, they're turned as Venetian. And this is a pointed Venetian because obviously pointed is in the style of the gothic so this is your drop gothic normal and when this obviously joints like that we've got a venetian a point of venetian arch and uh, just recap again on the lancer arch you can see that the striking points are outside the span it just pulls it in and then we have what well, i'm now going to finish off um, I'll bond this arch out again and just give it some colour and put some terminology on and that will be all three gothic arches covered and uh, after this we'll go on to uh, my favourite, the Florentine arch. 
So we see the arch has been coloured again. Um, this time I've turned it into a bonded gothic arch. Um, and the one thing is unique about this arch is that the span and the spring and line are both the same size. So I will just write here span and springing line are equal. And you see here the striking point for this side is on this side. So I'll just put a little note there. Striking point. If I put that in plural, I'll do the same just there. Okay, so just a little recap. That was our Gothic arch, technically equilateral. This was the drop Gothic, sorry, Lancer, and this was the drop Gothic. So they are the three different Gothic arches that uh, we can see. Um, all of these uh, in stonework, not very often in brickwork, on um, nearly every church, um, certainly in uh, Norfolk and Suffolk. Um, but again, we're now going to go to a very similar arch, very similar to this shape, um, but my, as I said before, my favourite one, which is a Florentine. So we'll do that one next.